Welcome back to statistics. We've seen that the shape of the sampling distribution of a sample mean, x bar, becomes increasingly normal as the sample size increases. We want to now look at the center and the spread of the sampling distribution. We're going to see that they have certain regular properties related to the sample size that we need to be aware of. We're going to measure the center and the spread with the mean and the standard deviation in this case. So let's take a look. So I have here uh, a histogram of fruit weights. Uh, there were four different kinds of fruits uh, in this population, and that's why you see the multimodal graph here. Uh, four different modes, one for each type of fruit. Uh, even though if we were just doing descriptive stats, we would probably use a five-number summary or maybe something even more elaborate to describe this distribution. Right now, I'm going to go ahead and describe the center with the mean, and that turns out to be about 59.3 ounces and the spread with the standard deviation, which is about 4.7 ounces. The reason why is because the mean and the standard deviation behave in predictable ways when you begin looking at the sampling distribution of a sample mean. And that's exactly what we want to do here. We're going to consider this as our population and we're going to look at samples of various sizes and the sampling distributions that come from them and see how the means and the standard deviations of those sampling distributions change. So let's get started. The first thing I've done here is take a uh, sample of size 2 and repeatedly uh, thrown those x bar values into a histogram. So this generates the sampling distribution for samples of size 2. And you see that here in the larger graph. I've uh, gone ahead and put up the population distribution here in, the, in an inset just for comparison's sake. Uh, but let's focus on the, stand, the uh, sampling distribution right now. So that's the sampling distribution for samples of size 2. And I've recorded the, the mean and the standard deviation here of the sampling distribution. So the mean of the sampling distribution is about 15.3, and the standard deviation of the sampling distribution is about 3.3, the units here are ounces. So if you compare that to the population distribution, you can see that the mean of the sampling distribution is actually quite close to the mean of the population distribution. But the standard deviation of the sampling di distribution is different. It's less than the population standard deviation. The population standard deviation is about 4.7. And for samples of size 2, the sampling distribution has a standard deviation of about 3.3. So there's a change there. But again, the means seem to be relatively consistent, relatively the same. So let's look at a different sample size. I'm just going to um, uh, increase the sample size by a factor of four. So I'm going to go to samples of size eight. You see there the shape of the sampling distribution now is becoming more and more normal. That's something we've seen uh, before. Uh, the mean of the sampling distribution is still very close uh, to the mean of the population distribution. To two decimal places, they're about equal. 15.29. Uh, but the standard deviation of the sampling distribution has changed again. Now it's 1.6718. So again, that's different than the sample uh, than the uh, standard deviation of the population distribution. It's also different than the standard deviation when the sample size is just two. In fact, if you look at this, increasing the sample size from two to eight, uh, approximately halved the standard deviation in the sampling distribution, right? 3.33 uh, down to 1.67. In fact, that's really close. That's almost exactly a half there. 
So that's something to look for going forward. Okay, so let's quadruple the sample size again and go to samples of size uh, 32 and look at that sampling distribution. There we have it. So now the shape of the sampling distribution, of course, is even more normal. Uh, the sample mean is, again, very close to 15.29. And the uh, standard deviation of the sampling distribution has, again, basically halved from about 1.67 to about 0 0.83, more like 0 0.84, actually. It's actually really close to just slicing that right in half. It looks like quadrupling the sample size basically cuts the uh, standard deviation uh, of the sampling distribution in half. Let's take one more example. We'll quadruple again to samples of size 128. And uh, the same pattern is holding. A mean of right around 15.3, but the standard deviation of the uh, sampling distribution has again been cut in half. Uh, this is a, a universal phenomenon. The mean of a sampling distribution turns out to be, theoretically, exactly equal to the mean of the population distribution. So in other words, if I could have gotten all possible X bars into these plots of the sampling distribution, I actually only had about 5,000. But if I could have gotten all of them in there, I would have gotten exactly 15.2911 across this uh, first row here of means of the sampling distributions. And if I could have gotten all the X bars into these sampling distributions, I would have seen this uh, standard deviation go down exactly by a factor of two. And so uh, in terms of the center and spread, the relationship is actually quite nice. Uh, the center of a sampling distribution is the same as the center of the population distribution. So the two means, the mean of the X bar values and the mean of the individual values from the population are exactly the same. And uh, quadrupling the sample size halves the uh, standard deviation of the uh, sampling distribution. And it turns out that that means that this formula holds. The standard deviation of the sampling distribution of X bar turns out to be the population distribution divided by the square root of the sample size. That square root is why uh, when you uh, quadruple the sample size, the standard deviation goes down by a factor of the square root of 4, which is 2. Let's uh, take a look uh, at this sort of and summary then. Uh, this slide summarizes what happens to the shape, the center, and the spread of the, stand, of the uh, sampling distribution of X bar. Uh, and so it might be useful for reference purposes. Let's take a look at an example and see how these would work. Uh, suppose that uh, IQ, intelligence quotient, uh, among all 7th graders has a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. Let's consider random samples from the population of all 7th graders of size 200. So we're taking samples of size 200, computing X bars, and throwing all those into a histogram to form the sampling distribution of X bar. What is the mean and the standard deviation of the distribution of sample averages? Well, let's record the information we have. Uh, since we're talking about the population of all 7th graders, that mean of 100 and the standard deviation of 15 are population parameters. So mu is 100 and sigma is 15. And we're dealing with samples of size 200, so our sample size is 200. From that, we can use our, the information on the previous slide to answer the question. The mean of the sampling distribution, mu of x bar, is equal to the mean in the population, so that would be 100. And the standard deviation of the sampling distribution, sigma of x bar, is our original sigma divided by the square root of the sa sample size. So that's 15 over the square root of 200, and that turns out to be 1.0607. And so we also know, by the way, 
that the sampling distribution would have a normal shape. And it turns out that three, these three pieces of information together will let us do some real calculations and inference with the sampling distribution. So that's our first taste, really, of uh, some uh, statistical theory that's going to enable us to do inferences about the population from sample data. What we're going to study next is the sort of details of this normal shape to the uh, uh, sampling distribution. And we'll have a theoretical model for it, and we'll actually be able to do calculations with it that uh, are going to be, again, part of the process of statistical inference. So I hope this video has been helpful to you. As always, stay safe. Let me know if you have questions, and we will see you back here again soon.